Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send out a hearty Shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so and never to waking up the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemia Shai. And Lord willing, this is edifying. Okay. Now, uh, the inspiration for this lesson uh, came from uh, the beloved brother, uh, Elder Yashawamba, you know, uh, watching one of his latest shows. And he made a statement that was very keen. Okay. And ultimately, it was, um, you know, we are in the process of the Heavenly Father bringing world peace. Okay. And um, as an Israelite, okay, in the know that has the proper understanding. And then as, Israel, uh, as an Israelite in whole, okay, um, this, is, this, is, um, this is a very delightful and, um, you know, very uh, uplifting time, man, okay? Because the scriptures tell us what, uh, better is the end of a thing than the beginning of it thereof, okay? And what this entails is we're at the end uh, of, our, um, of our afflictions, okay, our punishment, our iniquity. Okay, like it says in the book of Lamentations, the fourth chapter. Okay. And, um, you know, once you really understand that, okay, because the things that we see taking place, if, if you don't have the proper understanding, you're going to be afraid. Either you're going to be afraid or you, you're just going to try to block it all out. And I notice that's what our people are doing. They're trying to block out what is inevitable and what they see. And the reason they're doing that is because they're afraid, you see? So it works both ways. It's, it's, it's both of those uh, factors. When our people are afraid, okay, or people in general are afraid, they tend to ignore the obvious. Uh, in the world, they call it what? Cognitive dissonance, okay? Seeing things happen and knowing that something's going on but to, to totally ignore it. And that's exactly what they're doing. But the reality is, the Heavenly Father has begun the process of bringing world peace. And that shows you how far gone our people are, specifically Israelites, to the point where they're okay with living in wickedness. You know? Or turn a blind eye to wickedness. And that's not okay. That's not okay. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's been a process that has, uh, uh, you know, basically been going on since our inception. The, uh, uh, when you read, uh, I believe it's Deuteronomy, the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the ninth chapter, it, it, uh, the, the Heavenly Father goes into saying, look, you have been rebellious since, since I have known you. So that's the reason why you look at our people as a whole, and they're in the worst state that they've ever been in. Why? Because, hey, ultimately the wages of sin is death, okay? And punishment and all the scourges of amendment that the Heavenly Father has brought on this place is because of our wickedness, okay? But the great news is, uh, okay? The Heavenly Father is about to send His Son back, ultimately, ultimately to do what? to issue in world peace, okay? And we should be enthused about that. Get a first precept. This is, um, yeah, this is Second Ezra, chapter 15, and we'll start at five. Salakia, yep, yep, five. Second Ezra 15 and five, it says, Behold, saith the Lord, I will send plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death and destruction and that's been going on at an alarming rate okay and, and to the point where you have to acknowledge that this is a biblical proportion but like i was mentioning earlier when you're not in the know you don't have an understanding the scriptures say what um a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself 
But the key point is you have to be prudent to foresee the evil. And, 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 and uh, uh, what allows us to foresee the evil? The prophecies of the scriptures. So ultimately, everything boils back to the scriptures and the understanding of the uh, uh, of the holy word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That's and then that ultimately that's what makes you prudent. It says, verse five: Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. Verse six: For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. You see. So there is a cutoff point, and that's great news for those of us that believe, man, and that understand what's going on in the world. And more importantly, uh, uh, the, the, mind, the mind, okay, or the, uh, the intents, okay, of the Heavenly Father. You see, he's saying that it's fulfilled because, hey, hey, Ezekiel, the ninth chapter. Uh, uh, the scriptures speak about setting a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Lord willing, we're those men. We, it's, it's sickening, man. It's sickening. Waking up every day and it's getting worse and worse and worse. The last show I did, you, I, I made a, a statement. You can't say I've seen it all. You can't say that. You haven't. <laughs> you haven't seen it all, whether it's uh, in terms of righteousness or in terms of wickedness. You haven't seen it all. You know, watching the BET Awards the other day, and they had a, 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 no, no, it wasn't, no, it was, it was a video I saw on YouTube. Okay, although that BET Awards was absolute wickedness, you know, but it was a video I saw, and um, basically they had a drag queen walking down the runway with two kids, one on each side, and then you had other kids in the crowd giving the drag queens dollars. It's out of control. But the scriptures told us, it says, for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. You see, and that's and and and, and I, mean, I think I mentioned that in my last show as well, that. Although we hate beholding wickedness and seeing it and, uh, uh, you know, in the mindset of Job is skewing evil. Nonetheless, it gives us comfort at the same time. Because it lets us know that, okay, this, these hurtful works are being fulfilled. And, and eventually, okay, eventually the Heavenly Father is going gonna, is gonna to do away with it. And that's why, you know, hence the title of the lesson, the, uh, uh, the process of bringing world peace. You know, so all of these things had to happen, okay, because the scripture tells you, Sirach 42, and I believe that's 24, that all things are created double one against another. Basically to prove the good of another. So all the wickedness and uh, uh, hell that we beheld and that's been taken that has been taking place on this planet. Is to, to uh, 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 validate the goodness that the Heavenly Father is about to bring that world peace. You see. Um, verse seven, it says, therefore, saith the Lord. I will. I will no lock I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in these things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me and the souls of the just complain continually. OK, and that's bad news for you, those of you that don't want to conform, man. OK, because the heavenly father hears the cries of his saints. You see that innocent blood is crying to the heavenly father. You see, and, and he's going to do something about it. OK, you go into the the the, um, the account or the importunate widow. OK, who was crying and nagging a wicked ruler. And then eventually he said, you know what? So this lady doesn't keep nagging me. Let me go ahead and grant her her, her wish. So if a wicked ruler is going to do that for the, for the people, how much more a righteous power? Okay. The omnipotent Yahweh through his son, Yahweh shot, how much more him? Okay. And that's bad news for those of you who are just uh, 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 laden in iniquity. Okay. But all of that is a process of bringing world peace. This is um. This is the book of First John, 
chapter 5, and I'll start at 18, but the point is 19. It says, we know that whosoever is born of the most high sinneth not, but he that is begotten of the most high keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not. Okay. And who is that wicked one? Esau, Edom. You see, and all of this, everything has been building up. Okay. For the days of evil, like the scriptures say, he created the wicked the, uh, for the day of evil. You see? And, and to you Israelites that don't want to repent and conform, hey, ultimately, hey, like King David said, uh, uh, protect me, uh, Lord, keep me from the wicked, which is thy sword. And see, our people don't even understand it. They just look at it. Oh, the, the, the white man hates us. Of course he does. And you should hate him. Why? Because the heavenly father hates him. But more importantly, his blessing is the sword. And he is the whipping stick of the heavenly father. You see? So the, 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 the benefit in turning into the heavenly father, like it re reads here, I read it again. We know that whosoever is born of the most high sin, if not, but he that is begotten of the most high keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not. You see? And we understand the grand scheme of things. The most high is ultimately in control. So if he's in control of everything, even Esau, Edom, even the wicked, it's a no-brainer to conform to him, to repent. You see? That's why I said, whosoever is born of the most high. Verse 19, it says, and we know that we are of the most high and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And that's the reason, uh, one of the, the, the main reason that we can convey that. But why? Because we've turned back to the Heavenly Father and he's given us that eye salve and he shows us, look, everything around you is wickedness, man. Okay? Vanity and vexation of spirit. Everything around you. Outside of this truth, this word, and the, the true sincere men that teach it. Everything else is going to be destroyed. You see? It says, 19 again, we know that we are of the Most High. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. You see? So what's the opposite of wickedness? Righteousness. And that's what we are in the process of beholding. And it's exciting. It should be exciting. It should be something that, you know, you know, that you that you look forward to, especially as an Israelite. And it's sad that our people have basically don't even sign cry about wickedness. Because if they did, <laughs> we'd be out of here. But, you know, it's according to the Heavenly Father's timing. Because the Heavenly Father told us what? If we, uh, the people that are called by my name, uh, roughly paraphrasing, should repent and face the east and call on my name, I would deliver them. But the majority of our people don't even acknowledge the Heavenly Father and will not uh, sign cry about wickedness. They say, well, I'm in my house or I'm in my car, so it doesn't. No, that's not the spirit. Ezekiel 9, like I just quoted. A mark of exemption is going to be given to those that sigh and cry about all the wickedness and abominations that be done here, man. And that's what it boils down to. Okay? This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. Okay? Because all of this is a process. You know? This is uh, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. And we'll start at seven. OK, and obviously this is, uh, you know, the scriptures of the valley of the dry bones. OK, and those dry bones being the, the children of Israel. OK, coming back into their their their, um, their lot and then to the uh, the, the mindset uh, that the heavenly father ordered us to be in. OK, or, or wanted us to be in. OK, but obviously we know it was according to his timing. It's uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse seven. It says, so I prophesied. As I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Verse 8. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Okay, so it's showing you the process of the nation of Israel being awakened back to who they are. OK, and coming into that 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 uh, form of man that Yahweh Shemiah Shah wants us to be. 
Verse nine, it says, then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, come from the four winds, O breath. Okay. And what is that breath? The knowledge and understanding of these scriptures. You see, because it went into saying that, look, the bone, uh, the, the sinews and the, and the flesh came back upon them, but there was no breath in them. You see, it says. Um, verse nine again, then said he unto unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say unto the wind, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, come from the four winds, O breath and breathe upon them. Salakia, uh, breathe upon these slain that they may live. You see, and the scriptures talk about what uh, 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 in the book of Revelations, uh, their dead bodies shall lie in the street, which was spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. And guess where the Valley of Dry Bones is taking place? Mainly here in America. OK, and when you go to that word valley means a low lying place. And that's why it's referred to as the Valley of the Shadow of Death. Right. That low lying place where you can walk out your house, jump in the car and somebody runs you over, man. OK. Or somebody shooting at somebody down the block and you get hit by a straight bullet. The shadow of death is always around us and we're in a low lying place. You see, it says, um, verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. OK, and those are those fishers that ultimately the Lord is going to turn into hunters. You see. And it says, key point, an exceeding great army. And what does the army do? Okay? An army fights and goes to war. You see? So, and I hate to quote it, but it, it, it was um, uh, it was King. You know, uh, uh, Rick Ross basically said, I'm glad that uh, Trump became president because we got to destroy before we elevate. You see? And that's exactly what's to happen. Before we can get peace, war has to take place. Why? Because the rulers that be are not gonna lay down, are not gonna give up their kingdom. Okay, they pretty much Esau Edom has had the longest rulership out of all races of people. And obviously, no one wants to step down off the throne. So guess what? You have to take them off the throne. And that that has always been the mannerisms. And, and the method of operation of the Heavenly Father, always. For one kingdom to, to rise, another one has to fall. Um, let me see. Uh, verse 11, yep. It says, Then he saith unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our for our parts, verse 12, therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. You see? So that's a, hey, that's the great news, man. That's the gospel. And then through that, uh, uh, you know, and through this world peace is going to be established. Okay, why? Because we're going to take down uh, through the spirit of power of Yahweh by Shimei uh, uh the harbinger of death, which is Esau Edom. Okay, that wicked that we read about in 1 John, the fifth, fifth chapter. And once the wicked is taken down and put into captivity and then ultimately, ultimately eradicated from the earth, there, there will be world peace. You see? That's why this is a beautiful thing. Everything that we see happening has to happen. For that world peace and, you know, as a as an Israelite, that's what you should want. OK, Malachi 4 and 1 it says, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the proud. yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up. Say, if you how by Shemia was shy of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. OK, and that's uh, uh, ultimately this is speaking about Esau Edom. OK, he is the proud. Now, obviously, we have the proud amongst our people, okay, and the wicked amongst our people, but specifically speaking about Esau Edom, 
Okay, and shall burn them up and leave them neither root nor branch. Because the scriptures refer to men as trees. And the Heavenly Father, what he's sending back with his son is to destroy his core, his foundation. Ultimately, like it says in Isaiah, that he, he doesn't rise nor possess the, uh, uh, the cities of the world, roughly paraphrasing. Verse 2, it says, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. You see? Great news, verse 3, and ye shall tread down the wicked, there's that wicked again, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, say up your how about Shemiah Shai, okay? And now when the Lord comes back, he's taking all the crowns. He's taking all the crowns of all the kings and putting all of them in the subjugation. So therefore, there will be no more fighting. Once, once our heavenly father sends his son back, okay, He's going to fulfill what the Heavenly Father promised him for what he did when he came on the scene as Yahweh Shah, which is world dominance. And what is he coming with? Peace and healing. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay. Uh, let's get one more. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 2. And uh, we'll start at 3. This is Isaiah chapter 2. Verse three, and it reads, and many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai to the house of the most high of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. OK, and that's a. And that's what's going to establish that peace. Why? Because the reason everything is in disarray on this side is because there is no law. The, the law of Yahweh Hashem Shah is not established. Now, there is a law of the land. OK, but it, it, it's a bunch of uh, matter of fact. Let's get that. Let's get that. This is uh, Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And. Uh, Eight, it says, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. You see? So this is all a part of the process. And when you look at Esau Edom's track record, it's full of injuries and riches gotten by deceit, unrighteous dealings. You see? So they've shown that they're not fit to rule. Because ultimately, what is a king supposed to do is to order the people right. That's why King Solomon received everything. Why? Because he told the father, the heavenly father, that he wanted the wisdom and knowledge to rule the people in righteousness and to judge the people in righteousness. And when you do that, you receive everything. Why? Because everything works like it's supposed to. But like I say, the great news is the heavenly father is coming back to bring that on the planet, man. And it's, it's so beautiful and it's something to look forward to. OK, why? Because everything that we, we behold is, is, you know, is vexation of spirit. Like the scriptures say, it's vexing, especially when you turn to righteousness and you understand the true way and what the Heavenly Father intended and how it's supposed to be. And you look around you and everything is completely the opposite. Why? Because the adversary is ruling the adversary of righteousness in Esau Edom. Okay, but back at Isaiah chapter two, verse three, it says, and many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mount, the mountain of the Lord of Yahweh Hashem Shai, to the house of the most high of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for for out of Zion shall go forth uh, the law and the word of Yahweh Hashem Shai from Jerusalem. Verse four is the point. It says, and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. OK, and the opposite of war is peace.
So what the elder Yashawamba said was keen, man. What we're witnesses witnessing is the process of the Lord bringing in world peace. And if you're against that, then you're going to die. OK. And I say that in all humility. Okay, so um, I believe I hit the point and Lord willing, this was at a fine with that. I say Shalom.